So maybe we should start. Is everyone okay with that? Uh, so thank you everyone for coming here at this session about the, the SCART module. Uh, today we'll be talking about universal media management uh, in Drupal with the SCART module. Um, I'm very proud to be a speaker at DrupalCon. Uh, it's the first time, so you will still hear my French accent. Uh, and I would like to thank the Murphy Law uh, because this was supposed to be a connected session, uh, but I've screencasted the demo, so everything will be okay, but it's a PDF, so no animated GIFs. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, maybe I should start by an introduction. Uh, so I'm Sylvain Moreau from France. Um, I'm the CEO of uh, OWS, www.ows.fr. Uh, we're a medium company, a uh, Drupal shop. We've been doing Drupal uh, since uh, 2006, since the 4.6 version. Uh, we are kind of experts in France. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Slidebud. And uh, this is my uh, Drupal.org user. And uh, we are building big websites. Uh, maybe we should introduce you too. Um, so I guess you all know Drupal. I would make you raise the hand. Um, who has ever dealt with uh, media management in Drupal? Cool. <laughs> and who knows the SCART module? Yeah, quite cool. <laughs> and uh, who has ever written a provider for SCART? Yeah, three people, nice. Uh, so why I wanted to, that session to happen uh, is because media management is, uh, in Drupal is really a big, uh, big game. Uh, Dries talk, uh, talked about it in Portland, uh, but it is now poorly featured. I guess we all experience that. Um, I wanted to say and describe what is a media asset. Uh, you will see that later. Uh, what do I mean by universal management? It's kind of uh, pretentious, but it's really universal. And uh, to show you some demo uh, and to let you do that demo at home. Uh, so what we will be talking about is the history and the uh, adoption of the module, because it has a long history. So uh, maybe it's, a, it's a, a bit of context to understand that. Uh, then I will talk about the basics of the module. And um, the third point is an important point, is the providers. That's what makes the richness of the SCAL module. And then we will see the advanced use. Uh, we have some new features since the last version, so it's really cool to see them. And then we talk about the roadmap of the module, the future, and the announcement. So SCAL was a module starting in 2008. Um, at this time, there was a pre-alpha of Drupal 6, if I remember. Uh, it was started by a company in Chicago, which was called CTC, uh, for the um, uh, public radio of Chicago, which is Vocalo. And uh, they had this, uh, this need of uh, having a media manager for the radio, so they developed it. And we, AWS, we, we were sent to RFP by Radio France, which, which is um, the French national radio with uh, 10 channels. And they wanted to have a, to use Drupal, and they wanted to have a media manager. So we met in Seget with uh, CTC people, and we agreed to work together on that module. Um, unfortunate, unfortunately, this uh, company was uh, down because some people got depressed, and so it just shut down. And uh, we had to continue to maintain that module because we wanted to use it. And uh, we had the support from Radio France, our customer. Uh, the main objective was to was media management because uh, the Radio France had to handle uh, thousands and thousands of media, uh, and it also had to be usability because when you deal with a hundred of journalists uh, using your back office, you have to make things very simple to handle audio, video, and images. And uh, Radio France wanted it to be a community solution, so they really insisted that uh, it was. Um, uh, co um, contributing module. Uh, so then we decided to port it in uh, early 2000 or 2012 uh, because uh, Radio France wanted to, to make the step to Drupal 7 for the site. And we released uh, the stable version, or the, I mean the dev version for 7 uh, in April 2012. And now it's stable uh, since April. 
uh, to talk about the adoption and the adoption of the history of a module. Uh, in Drupal 6, there were very few users, but big ones. Uh, there were Radio France and uh, some small, some uh, big media companies. Uh, why this poor interest in the, in the project? Um, it was because it, it brought its own version of Entity, so in, in Drupal 6. So at that time, people didn't understand the concept between, uh, behind that. Uh, you, in Drupal 6, you only had node, taxonomies, and users, and that's it. Uh, so Scalde uh, had already rewritten the entity system, so it's, it was a bit hard to understand at the time. Uh, then there was this UX design uh, from the, the Age of Stone. Uh, it, I will show you after. Uh, we did no community work at all. We just worked for our customer, so nobody knew it was a great module. And uh, you had to be an, an expert to install that module. Uh, you can see there the old UI. Uh, it was not really compatible with uh, French national uh, radio uh, needs. Uh, you see the small plus button. They were hard coded like plus and a link to that. And you can see the, the icons. They are not really nice. And it was made by developers for developers. So what we decided is to really change the game in Drupal 7. And uh, we decided to rewrite it but based on Entity, which is a mainstream concept in Drupal 7. I guess you all know Entity. Um, we also hired, or oh, there was a UX designer that was really fond of Scalde, so she decided to participate, and there was a complete, complete uh, redesign of a UI and the UX. You can see the, the library, which, is, which looks really nicer now. And we also made some, we also made some community work, uh, like documentation, now you, can, uh, you have a strong documentation for that module. Uh, communication, which is I'm doing right now. <laughs> and issue queue, because uh, now the issue queue is active in Drupal 7. So now who is using Scald right now in Drupal 7? You have big media companies. Uh, you have TV channels, uh, France Television, Arte, which is French and German television. Uh, LCP, which is a French public television, Africa 24, African ne Network. Uh, you have radios, you have Radio France, or Radio France, <laughs> which is uh, the historical user of Scout. Uh, you have Radio Nova, which is really a cool radio in France uh, with big, good music. Uh, you have newspapers, Le Figaro, which is the, one of the, the two more imp most important newspapers in France. Uh, you have Santé Magazine, which is a monthly newspaper about health. Uh, you have institu institutions like the French government for some sites about the World War I, uh, the British Council in the UK, uh, the Opéra de Paris. Uh, and you also have, uh, which is really important for us, um, Drupal integrators and editors like Commerce Guys. You know, you all know Commerce Guys, they are sponsors. Uh, Smile, which is a big uh, French integrator and uh, Code Enigma, which is a, a, a Drupal shop like OWS, but in the UK. And uh, I want you to use Scout because it's really nice, so I will show you just after. So here you can see some user testimonials coming from all around the world. Um, this was supposed to be funny because it's an animated GIF, but it's not. <laughs> um, and we won, I mean all the Scout team won, the CMS Day Award. Uh, in June for the best back office innovation in Paris and we competed uh, against many of our CMSs and we were uh, we won this award so it's it's really good thing happening for SCAL. Um as for the statistics you can see that the um, we there's a, a big curve and uh, this snapshot is from two weeks and I guess it's continuing to rise and this GIF was supposed to be a Carlton dance from the fresh place of better it's really important. Um, now I can show you some sites made with SCALM in Drupal 7. Um, these examples are important because um, the companies behind, uh, behind uh, these sites, uh, they are not our customers, and they made some benchmarks uh, comparing the, the main solutions uh, with media management in, um, in Drupal 7. And all these people, they decided to pick up SCALM. So the first one is uh, Commerce Guys. Uh, they made the Drupal Commerce Marketplace with Scald. 
So if you go to that site, you can see the source code and see there's a lot of Scalda inside. And the, the one who picked up that was Bojan from Commerce Guys. Uh, then you have Arte Creative, which is um, a site for creative people uploading their videos uh, to Arte, which is the French German TV channel. Um, this is really a nice one because it's um, you can see it's flat design, but it's re it's responsive, and it's res responsive with video and images, and it uh, extensively uses Scald. And the people at Arte they also decided to pick up Scald when they made a benchmark and uh, they are migra migrating all their sites to Drupal plus Scout. Uh, then you have uh, Le Figaro. Le Figaro. <laughs> um, and uh, they made the, the we uh, website generator, um, which is called the Garden of the Figaro. Um, when they want to generate a new site, they, they use this, this tool, and they included Scout inside, so you can see the, the site from the Festival de Cannes which was in May, and uh, it also makes use of SCAD for managing the media. And uh, inside the Figaro team, there was uh, Yves Chedemois, uh, Ished, which picked up this solution when he made the benchmark with all the Figaro team. So after this story, maybe I can tell you a little bit more about SCAD. Um, so it's a universal media asset manage management manager on Drupal, and when we mean universal, it's because when you think of media, you can think about images, videos, and sounds, and files. But uh, for Scald, it's more than that. Uh, a tweet is a media. There is no file for a tweet. Um, a Facebook status is a media. A blog, a Drupal blog, is a media. A commerce product is a media. Uh, everything is an asset. And so that's why it's universal, because you can extend it the way you want it. So with Scarlet, you can use and reuse, that means shared, uh, by users, uh, all of these assets. And the UX uh, has to be very simple, so it's uh, by using drag and drop uh, into standard Drupal objects. So that means uh, nodes, entities, taxonomies, users, uh, whatever is an object and is fieldable in Drupal, you can use Scarlet with. It also works with blocks. And, um, and for that, there is a unique UI for search and share and create. Uh, you can see uh, it's a bit of deja vu. We have media. Uh, yeah, it's kind of media, but um, it's a very different approach because uh, media is uh, file centric. Uh, media makes the assumption that every file is a media, and we do not with Scarlet, and we have a different history, so it's not really the same. But it does the same job. So to start with, there is a, the main concept is the media atom. Um, so it's a single digital asset. Um, it has a type. There's a missing bullet point. Uh, it has a type, so it can be a video, it can be a file, um, it can be an audio, it can be an image. And it also has a provider. So the main obvious provider is a file. You upload an image but it can be an external source. For an image, for example, it can be Flickr. You want to get that, uh, to include an image from Flickr, and this is um, a media atom of type image coming from the provider Flickr. So every atom has a thumbnail, because it's very important for the back office user to identify its atom. Um, it has also an offer system. Every atom has an offer, which is a, a taxonomy. It has tags, which is very helpful to, to browse uh, millions uh, or uh, thousands of medias. Uh, it's a D7 entity. I've already said that. So I, that means it's fieldable. So you can extend your atom, uh, providing these basic fields, uh, with any field of a field API you can be thinking of. So there can be a, a maybe a, a GMAP on an atom. It's possible you can store uh, latitude and longitude. Uh, it has a CRUD system, it has a built-in CRUD system because it's, um, it's important to be able to finally manage media uh, when uh, some people have access to media or when you must shut down access to media after a period, like 30 days for some images. And also it has a cache system, so it can handle big media sites, uh, otherwise it, it couldn't. 
So the, the main thing showing media atoms in the back office is the media library. So it's a unique UI to search, create, and also use and reuse the media atoms. And the, the great thing is that it's a view. So if you are a Drupal site builder, you can extend it, you can customize it, uh, and you have infinity, infinite possibilities. Uh, and maybe a demo is better at this point, so uh, I will show you a screencast uh, about the, the library. So this is a, a just a simply test instance. You have one node, so you can go and edit it. And you can see the library on the right side of the screen. So there are two panels in the library. You can see the medias that are in your libraries. You can see there are, there are small icons for types. And then you can search them with a the second panel. So you can filter by any type. Um, and as I said before, this is a view. So you can, add, you can add an exposed filter if you have any other fields. Uh, and then you can filter by the offer, uh, which is a taxonomy, so you have, you have the autocomplete auto there if you, you go to Vivo. And it also allows you um, to search, but also to create just right from the same place. So here you have a, the example of a, a creation of a video. Uh, you can choose between uh, different providers. So I will show, show you that later. Uh, then you can also create images. These, these are the different type of medias you can, you can create and you can add more. So it's really simple. Um, it also works with um, drag and drop. We we'll see that just in another screencast. And then there, there are these offers and tags and you get immediately your, uh, your creative media into the library. So it's very simple and it appears on every form uh, that is using SCALM. Yeah. Uh, so how can you use these atoms? Because I've, sh I've shown you how to create them, how to search them, how uh, to, to see them. Uh, the first um, field that is provided with Scaldi is called Atom Reference. Um, so it's a simple field uh, where user can drag and drop media atoms, any kind of atoms. Uh, so it's the same that uh, in D6 uh, there was user and node reference. Um, in D7 we have that and plus entity reference or product reference for products in Drupal Commerce. Um, it's the same but with atoms. So um, you can also uh, reference different type of atoms. You can limit them or you can uh, just allow any type of atom to be drag and dropped. So a simple use case of that would be a, a video wall uh, or a multimedia gallery. There, there is a Scalde gallery module, which is really nice and has a much more feature than a, a simple gallery. So you can try that. Uh, and maybe I can show you what, how it works on a commerce kickstart instance. Uh, if you want to add scale dates, really simple. So again, sorry for switches. It was supposed to be on Google. Okay. So this is really the Murphy law, you know. So here we have a um, Drupal Commerce instance. Uh, I've seen, and uh, I guess you've already seen that site. Um, so now we go to the content type. We've already added an um, atom reference field. You can see it here. So maybe you can see how the properties works. So it's really just a field. And you can limit the type of atoms that you want to add. And then it's just set up. So it's really adding a field. And then if you go to a, a blog post, which was our content type, you just edit it. You have a, your regular node edition uh, form. 
and then you have this atom reference just right here and you can get any media from the li library I've limited to video so if you drag and drop uh, images it won't work and then you can add any media you want and you can also preview them in the field so that's a bit of what Tris showed about the, the simplicity of the UI in Drupal 8 it's uh, on the same thing and then you can reorder it so if you just save your, your node you have your video all over it's not themed, it's very basic but it takes two minutes to implement your video wall. And it can also be a multimedia wall if you want to mix between images and videos and flash, anything you want. Okay. So uh, this was the first thing and the most important thing, I guess, uh, that contributors like very much is the WYSIWYG integration. So uh, you've seen it working with the field, but um, it works with any uh, text area which is enabled uh, for SCAL. So it's just a, a checkbox to check. Uh, it works with the main RTEs in Drupal 7, uh, that is with a WYSIWYG module. So it can be TinyMC, CK Editor, or Aloha, or whatever. But uh, I would advise you to use CK Editor because uh, now it's in core, Drupal 8. And it has a different, um, a different way, a technical way of um, attaching JavaScript, which works much better with SCAL. Uh, so there is a more advanced integration with CK Editor. Right now we are working on CK Editor with SCAL because uh, it will be in core in Drupal 8 and it, are, it has all the features that um, enables uh, SCAL power. Uh, so maybe I can show you a screencast about that, about the basic drag and drop use into text area. Switch again. So this is a website we are about to release next week. It's uh, accessible. So you can edit any page you want, just like you would do in Drupal. And here you are in the node editing, editing page. You can see that the, the body, you can see the library coming. It has only two types of medias, three types, videos, images, and PDF. And this one is an existing node, so I won't break the thing and add another page. And then into the body, which is enabled for scale, you can just write your text, get some image, drag and drop it. And that's it. And you can also do it with a PDF file from your library. This, uh, this customer has the, the need to, uh, to embed many PDF files. So this is it, you have your PDF file into your text area. After that, I will show you more advanced views, uh, what you can do about media that you have already drag and dropped in the text area. But this is the basic use, and it suits 90% uh, of your regular customer needs. So uh, the most important thing after the basic are the providers in SCAL. That's what, make the, what makes the, the richness of the module. So we worked very much on providers and people from around the world, they also worked on providers. So this was supposed to be a, a, funny, a funny gif. Uh, if a woman opens the, the closet and everything, everything falls on her. That means there are many providers. Um, so you have a list. On that Drupal page, you can go there. Uh, the existing ones are very various. So you have all the video ones, I will show you in the next slide. Uh, you have the sound ones, so the, the file is the most obvious one, but you can import file, uh, sounds from SoundCloud. For media, it's very important. Uh, you have images from the file, but also from Flickr, from Instagram, what you want. Uh, you have social, um, social uh, providers. You have commerce providers, you can, you can just drag and drop products into your, your Drupal content. Um, you have Drupal objects, which is really interesting. These are sandboxes, but it works. So you can drag and drop blocks with the bin module. You can drag and drop views 
which allows you your contributors to find any view and drag and drop it. Um, you can drag and drop rich media like galleries, so you can embed many galleries into a gallery. It's kind of recursive. Uh, you have exotic one like data wrapper, which can embed graphs, uh, which is really nice. You can embed slide shares like the, this presentation into a node. And there is the regular content ones like file or PDFs and custom text. Um, why there are so many providers? It's because it's very simple and documented API. So it's very easy to work with for developers, but also for people who are like me, between developers and site builders. Uh, you can write a provider in half a day or one day. So it's very, it's very easy. You have examples, extended examples. So if, you, if there is a provider you, that you think of, but there is not there, you should try because it's very easy. Uh, for the video example, if we focus on the video, um, the existing one are YouTube, so you import for, you just copy and paste a YouTube URL, and then it's done, and you get all the information from YouTube, and you have your video inside your library. Same for Vimeo. Um, Telemotion is the same, but it has uh, uh, an extra feature, uh, which is important. You can subscribe to keywords or user channels on uh, Dailymotion. And then when you, uh, when you run the cron job, uh, every new video about this topic, about this user or from this user gets imported into your library. So for media, if he has a Dailymotion or YouTube channel, uh, all of the journalists, they can use the, the videos from the, from the morning. They can use it in their article just uh, five minutes after. Uh, then you have uh, embed.ly, which is uh, like one provider to rule them all, uh, because it, uh, it, uh, opens, it opens you to more than 200 providers, uh, like Google Maps or Prezi or any exotic providers. So it's really nice and it works. And then you have all, the, all these property, proprietary uh, video providers, uh, professional ones, and uh, these are used only by big customers, but it can fit your needs or, or the need of your customers. And then you have the last one, which is the most obvious one, which is Videofile pl uh, plus JS player, but then you will have to handle all the encoding and broadcasting and player, and um, usually you don't want to do that, only for small sites. But if you are on, uh, on big media sites, you use professional video services. Uh, then we'll, we can talk about advanced use. Um, so first, um, many of the demos that you've seen, uh, they were made on simplytest.me. Uh, who knows simplytest.me around here? Cool. So you have um, a distribution, which is called Scout Galaxy. And uh, you can install it on um, simplytest.me. It takes two minutes and you have a full loaded SCALD um, site running with all, with all the latest releases of SCALD and the contributing modules. So you can try, you can test, you can drag and drop, create, extend the field. There, are, there is already some content type that you can try. And if you register on simplytest.me, you have three hours, so you can play a lot. Um, since the 1.1 version, uh, which was in July. Uh, we've worked on more CK editor integration. Uh, so we have some nice cool features, um, which are context change. Uh, context change is when you drag and drop an image and you want it to change because the image is too small, so it has to be medium. Because the video player is not the one you want. Uh, maybe you are, you, you like a, small, a smaller one or because the audio player, you have three formats, and depending on the content type you use, you want to change them. Uh, there is this legend, so any media comes with a legend, and it's important for a newspaper. So you can, there is a default one, but you can change it. Uh, there is this alignment fixing. You can also link your media to another site, and you can also, you can also cut and paste into the text area. So I will show you that. So this is the, the editing of a regular node. So we have our library, same set that we saw just a few minutes ago. So this is the regular image size. But if you want to go back to the, to just to the original size image, 
you just right click, edit add-on properties, and then it's done, you have a regular image size. And you can do that with many contexts, as long as you have defined context for your media. So there is also this legend editing, because when you drag and drop an image, you have a legend, just here it's a default theme, but you can uh, define a theme, uh, a theme for uh, any media uh, for representing the legend, and you can edit it, so let's go. It's always, always with a right click into CK Editor, and you just don't want a legend, and you don't have a legend. There is also the alignment. So these are really simple examples. You can extend it the way you want because you have different type of medias and different type of properties. Now we can center our image. We can also link. So this is, I will make a link to www.ws.fr, which is our new site. You should go to it. It's responsive. <laughs> And then you are something very simple, but for editors it's important, it's the cut, cut and paste. And it just works in CK Editor. So you have all these extra features bundled into CK Editor integration, and that's why we are more and more working on CK Editor, because it allows um, Scald to do that. And the last part is the magical use. So this was also an animated GIF, but anyway, it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, so um, um, there was work done on Drupal 8. Dries told us about uh, UX and offering experience. Um, it, at first, it was called Spark because it was uh, this movement trying to improve uh, the, the UX. Um, so we decided uh, in the SCAR module to take advantage of that um, and work with a Spark team, uh, with the core maintainers and uh, with Equia on that. Um, so uh, we've worked on many aspects. Uh, the most obvious one is inline editing. You've, uh, it was in Drew's keynote this morning, uh, the inline editing stuff, and Scald in Drupal 7, uh, it already works. You, you have to install the edit module, which is a backport from the Drupal 8 features, and it works, I would show you. Um, we add drag and drop on uh, the output when you use media, but many people ask for the drag and drop uh, on the input. So we worked on the PL upload integration, just the one, exactly the one you saw for the file or image this morning. So um, editors can just drag and drop a bunch of files uh, into SCARM. And there is also the, the responsive integration because everything now goes responsive and mobile. Um, so with the picture.js module, picture, uh, it there is an integration with SCAD, and you can uh, handle your, all your image styles uh, just by drag and dropping one and define your styles for the breakpoint. So demo time. So this is a, a bare uh, simply test instance. Maybe it, it's gone too fast. So I will show you again. So you click on quick edit here, and this is the inline edit part. And you have a library, just like in a regular editing. You can drag and drop an image, and you save, and it's done. You've updated your node with media. So it works with videos, images. Uh, then there is this PL, uh, PL upload thing. So you have uh, your library right there. You must add image, so you can bulk add image. You just drag and drop. You can notice that you can bulk uh, add offers and tags. That means uh, you won't have to input them for your 10 medias or your 20 or your 100 of medias after that. So it's just one form to, to them all. But it's only pre-fill, pre because if you go to the next step, just after you've uploaded your media, you have all, uh, I guess it's seven on this example, all the seven examples with the default offer and tags you've updated, it, and it's done. 
and then you go to library, and you have all your seven new media there. And the last thing is the responsive in integration. So this is also a bare install of SCARN, configured with um, image tiles and breakpoints, and you can see it's working. And this, this media was just drag and drop into the text area. So nothing to do for the editor in the back office, just drag and drop it. He doesn't have to care about the breakpoints and the image formats. So maybe if you want to start after this session, where to start? Um, you have a core module. Uh, the main page is well documented. It links you to, towards all these um, examples that you can see. You, it links you towards the provider list, which is updated uh, really often. Um, it leads you to the installation profile, uh, so you can play on simplytest.me. Just try it, you can try it, just write uh, now the Wi-Fi comes back in DrupalCon, and it takes two minutes and you can start to play, and if you catch me later in the conference, you can ask questions. Uh, there is uh, extended documentation, uh, listed here, and there, is some, there are some screencasts uh, about some very basic aspects of SCALD, but if you want an, an introduction to that, you can do that. Um, I have to warn you, it's in French, no, it's in English, but it's a French accent, so it's the same. So, <laughs> if you didn't like it at this session, don't go there. <laughs> um, as for the roadmap, uh, then again, it's an animated GIF, it's a uh, uh, Chuck Norris using a blade and stopping it with his hand. It's a Chuck Norris thing. Um, the roadmap is clearly aimed on uh, providing more providers uh, because uh, it's what people want and people use. So we are making more providers and people around the world are contributing to making more providers. Uh, we do regular code sprints around SCARD. So if you want to be involved in, in one, uh, it's on French time, uh, just uh, get in touch with me. It's, uh, it can be remote code sprints, it can be document documentation sprint, it can be uh, screencast sprint uh, or uh, design. We have designers uh, coming to the sprint, so if you want to get involved, just get in touch with me or any other maintainer will get you in. Uh, the, the community is growing, so we'd like to support that. That's why we are doing this session and uh, these presentations. Um, the issue queue is really, really active. Uh, so we have to handle it, and uh, there are more and more bugs getting bashed. Uh, we are aiming to a 1.2 release. Uh, there will be few improvements, but good improvements. So there will be a new logo because the actual one is kind of geeky. So there, will, there is a designer working on that. Uh, most important thing is that there has been some iterations about UI and UX. Uh, which are coming to the next version, and the library that you've seen, it's already updated, and we've worked more on the ergonomics, and it's going to be released in uh, 1.2. And uh, we are also aiming to have a media center, because you've seen the library, so for us, many editors it's useful, but uh, a media center, which is a, a page a listing and uh, um, allowing you to edit and search and do what you can do with library, but on a, on a media center would be a really a good thing. It has been asked for by many. And we're going to port it to Drupal 8. So as uh, Dries said this morning, uh, we'd have to wait early 2014. But it's a, it's a goal because it's really a nice module and we have more and more users. So I think that it will be naturally ported to Drupal 8. And finally, word domination, but you, you all know that. Uh, so as for the community, uh, as I said before, it's open to contributors. Uh, just jump in, it's like Drupal, uh, it's like any Drupal project. Uh, we have and we need providers and patchers and committers from all around the world. We already have some people from France, Germany, Spain, uh, all over Europe, the US, and even Africa. So it's really cool, it's a, a nice community. Um, we have uh, an active and a very reactive issue queue. So feel free to jump in and uh, provide us with bugs or slash some bugs and, and commit some patches. And uh, we also need more and more user feedback and use cases because it's really what matters. Uh, SCALD is designed to, uh, to respond to the user needs. So if you have needs and feedback, 
just be free. Uh, so it's up to you now. And that's it. And if you have any question or it's the time to, to ask them, and you have a mic for that, just in the middle of a, of a room. Thank you. Um, there are two things. Uh, the first thing, it, it has a cache system, so it just scales like other Drupal sites. You have to build cache strategies uh, above that, but uh, as long as there is a cache system integrated, uh, you have the uh, ability to extend that. And um, when, you, when you deal with large amount of files, like uh, media, uh, there are some strategies to build. Um, like the most of your swan transliteration, but you also have to to make tokens for your file field path, because when you upload a thousand and thousand of medias, usually uh, when you're a beginner, you do that in the same directory and it explodes. So you can do that, but it's it's more a file management in Drupal uh, issue than than a scale issue. And then again, you have a CRUD system, you have a cache system. Uh, it's entity, so you can use entity cache and all that stuff. So it's it's really scalable the way Drupal scales. Any other question? Yeah. Does the module handle the uh, embedded metadata, like exit or stuff like that? Uh, yes, there is. Um, for in your example, um, exif uh, exif metadata, there is a module called scaled extra or scaled extra data. Uh, which does the job for you. You just enable it and you get all the, the exif stuff uh, right into your media atom. But as I, as I said before, um, an atom is an entity. So if you want, and there is an API, so if you want to add extra fields to uh, any entity type, like an image, you add, you add this exif uh, fields, and then uh, you can make a hook to, to just fill them. That's what does the Scaled Extra module. But you can do it for MP3, you can do it for any type of media you can think of. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yes? Uh, is it possible to uh, convert images of MP? To convert? Uh, I didn't hear the. Convert image, like if I would upload the JPEG file, convert it to GIF or something else? Oh, um, Yes, because um, when um, so when you upload an image media, uh, when you drag and drop it, when you use it anywhere, um, you use it in a context. As I said, there is a, this context stuff, and uh, this context use players, so you can uh, you can have different players, and for images, the players are image styles. So if you work with image styles, uh, you can definitely. Uh, use image, some image type module to convert JPEG into GIF, or it's just uh, it's image magic or a, a JD2 library that does that, but you have image style which uh, does that for you uh, above the library. Yes? Yeah, really we have not uh, yet worked on the accessible thing. The, the site that you saw uh, is accessible on the front end, but on the back end it's really, really difficult. So I guess it's 50% it's accessible and it doesn't handle all the cases because it makes a lot of use of JavaScript. So we haven't worked on accessible uh, on the back end. Yes? Uh, for Twitter, you just um, paste the URL from a tweet, and it just import the tweet, uh, the picture of the, the, the user, and um, the time of the tweet and metadata like that, and you can embed the tweet into uh, into an article. And for uh, Facebook, it's only Facebook statuses, so you you find your user and you embed its statuses and it gets updated into your content. And you can imagine of providing more social providers. It's only you plug into their API and you just transform it into atoms. 
Yes. The alt and title, um, uh, there is uh, the title attribute it comes from the title of the atom. It's uh, it's this mapping, and the alt. Um, I think there's a, there's an issue open for that. Right now, we don't have uh, the metadata for the for the alt. Uh, yes. I did not understand the question. Are you able to override the metadata when you embed it in the node? So it's different from the uh, library. Uh, what, what you embed in the node uh, is really um, a markup. And um, it's regenerated when you edit the node, but uh, it's regenerated when you see the node. So you, we do not embed metadata. We, they are stored into the entity. And uh, if you want to change, it, change them, you edit the entity. And then you, you can film the way you want your entity with all these metadata because they, they come with, uh, with that. So a question? Uh, you mentioned the uh, similarity to the media module. Is there any work on integrating the two? Or? Uh, w w yeah, we, w there were some issues in the, in the two issue, issue queues. But right now we have, um, we have two different approaches. And they are not really mergeable, you know. Uh, media is based on file entity, and it will, I guess, it will always be because there, there is a lot of work done on file entity, and Scald is not based on that. Uh, it's a, a tweet is not a file, so you 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 can spoof it. Uh, that's what does media for videos coming from YouTube. You know, it defines a false um, false headers and false metadata to to say it's a file, and uh, we did not make this choice, but. The main obvious uh, merging point would be the library, because the library is very ergonomic. And I think it would also suit uh, the, the media needs. So we are working the, with the media team to, to maybe merge efforts on that. But it's the most obvious merging point. But the other things, they are more difficult. Yes? On the point of merging, have you looked at the asset module, which has a very similar Yes, I think that uh, I think that the asset module has very much looked at us also, because <laughs> at first, if you see the history of the module, there was no library, and now there is this new shiny library which is almost the same. So they looked at us. Um, there was a plan at first to work together, but when we saw that this library was used on asset, uh, yeah, it's very similar, but asset. It doesn't, know, it doesn't have a cache system. Uh, it does not use the same mechanism. That means in assets, you can inject some uh, JavaScript. It does, um, it does allow confidence to the back office user. And Scalday is not about that. It's about generating some markup based on atom types and cache and things like that. Yes? I don't hear you. Maybe you should pick the mic. I don't hear you. Uh. Uh, is it possible to create uh, a sort of gallery with uh, uh, image, video, like playlist, uh, in order and um, make this, um, for example, for the imaging, I think it's uh, more important um, to have metadata no? or a gallery made it uh, expo uh, better, no? Uh, that's, that's what the Scal Gallery module does. It allows you to create very rich galleries, uh, allowing you to mix videos, images, and uh, other, uh, other atoms you want. And you can define context for them, and you can have responsive galleries. And there is a, a UI, improved UI for managing your galleries. And you can define your metadata by atom types. Is that what your question? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yes? Um, it's made, um, um, every atom is an entity, so we use um, entity translation. It's the way to do that. Yes? Just in, yes? Uh, Does Scale support copying of images? No. 
it supports cropping um, if you want to use a, an image field crop module when you input the, the original image, but you cannot recrop an image when, uh, when it's done. So you have to consider that a cropped image is another version of image. But we are working because uh, we are working on that because we, there is a need for a cropped image. But it's um, it's a discussion where where um, if you edit uh, an existing image that is already used in some context and that you edit it and you crop it, what has to be done with the existing uh, instance of the image? They don't want to be cropped, so. Uh, you won't be able to regenerate the cache, and uh, so we must consider that a cropped image is a new version of an image. But we are working on a UI to do that. Yes? Uh, does it integrate with the video module where you have uh, multiple transcoding jobs? Um, I think it should, but it's. Uh, Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, does it integrate with the video module, uh, which allows you to transcode and uh, and do everything with video? Um, I think you can take code from that and maybe find some integration. But um, uh, I think we should work on a provider with the functionalities of the video module. But it's very really different because if you want to um, to um, to use these videos after they are uploaded, you have to define some transcoders and you have to design some players, and so it's more a, a scaled module than a integration with video. It's, I think it won't work natively. Any other question? Yes. I can hear you, but you. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, maybe a simple question, but what if I have a? 100,000 files already in my site, and on Monday I go back to my office and want to install Scald. Is it, you know, I push yeah. the button and it works? Or It's not as simple as pushing a button, but it's as simple as, um, as studying some uh, very basic uh, Scald module, like a file module, because there is a file module for Scald, and writing a migrate class to import that. So. Uh, I think for a good developer, it will take uh, Monday and Tuesday, and then it will take two weeks of testing and all that stuff. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you you can do it. Some people have migrated big files to to scald, but it's much a, a, a migrate process. You just have to to make the the good uh, modelization about these files because some files are videos, some files are images, so it's really up to you the content of uh, your hundreds or thousands of files, and you have to map them very carefully. And after that, you, you can use them uh, whenever you, you want. Yes? Uh, it was not usable since the 1.1 version. Uh, now it's the case. Uh, am I wrong? Uh, I am. No, yeah, now you can use the private file system. Uh, we do not have enough user feedback for on big systems, but it works, and uh, there was no recreation that showed up in the issue queue, so I do not personally have experience with a, a private file system, but now it works. And it also works with tricky case like um, media stored in HTTP and HTTPS on some reverse proxies and some CDN, so these use, case, use cases are already covered because big media companies, they, they always have these problems. So any remaining question, maybe? Yes? Do you have to use the widget on the right? Like on the right where can you use the more standard widget? No, you don't, uh, because it's, um, it's an extension of Scalday, which is called the, the media library. And then into the text area, you have a, it's called the multimedia editorial element to, to see what I've done. But you can enable this and maybe um, not, show, not show it. Uh, it's a configuration. And you can insert some markup with a plugin that you would write for a CK editor. We are also working on um, something that would be nice, would be a CK editor plugin, uh, where you just click insert a media. It opens a, a model frame and then you search uh, through a media center, and you just click, and then you just insert. And this is the media center I was talking about. 
Any remaining question? That's a nice question, by the way. <laughs> okay, so feel free to come and ask questions anytime you want in the DrupalCon. Uh, you have some maintainers of Scalde right here, so if I'm not able to answer your question, I will get you in touch with them and to, to find any question. And just try it in, on simplytest.me. It only takes two minutes and you will be able to play with whatever you want. So thank you very much for coming to this session.